Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley Jones from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and welcome to this week's Software Success. So we're going to be talking about quilting designs again using my quilt embellisher. So tell me over in the chat where you're watching from. I see we have lots of people already piping in, so we'll just give um, a few more minutes to let uh, everybody join. Um, but tell me, are you working on quilting for the holidays? Are you making any quilted gifts? Um, are you just doing some quilting for yourself? Uh, so tell me that over in the chat. I'd love to hear it too. So I love quilted gifts. I think that they're so fun to make, especially uh, small projects. I love doing um, small quilting because I can get it done in a short amount of time and get to enjoy it and have fun. So uh, so hi, everyone. Let me know where you're watching from. And so Carla, thanks for joining uh, this afternoon. So good to see you. So Julie, I'm so recognizing all of these uh, names. So thanks for joining. So um, my friend uh, Eileen uh, Reichert from uh, Maryland. And I got to put a face with Eileen's name last week. So fun. So, and Julie says it's raining in Michigan. So um, sorry to hear that, Julie. Maybe it won't last long unless, of course, you need some rain. So uh, Sue, thanks for joining um, from India. So Dawn from Virginia from Creative Applique. Thanks for joining, Dawn. So my neighbor to the north, Harriet Ann Palmer. Thanks for joining. Um, and Sue Brown. Thanks for joining, Sue. So you guys know Sue. Uh, a lot of times she's on Facebook Live on Thursday with um, Eileen, and she teaches a lot of our software um, as well. So thanks for joining, Terry. Uh, good to see you. Rain Wilcoxon of Embroidery Gardens. Glad to have you here, Rain. I appreciate it. So Terry, thanks for joining. Another name that I am definitely starting to see. And Mary Ann, Caroline, thank you all for being here. Um, Denise, good to see you from Jackson, Tennessee. Um, very nice to have all of you guys here joining us. So um, are you guys quilting? Have you been using your My Quilt Embellisher since last time? we met. Um, so tell me that over in the chat as well. So thanks everybody for, for joining. So we might have a smaller crowd, uh, maybe because of the holiday. So who knows, but we'll go ahead and kind of get started with our topic um, so that we can get going on all these details. So last time on Software Success, we talked about my quilt embellisher and the things that you could do with built-in quilting fills and the built-in quilting motifs. So today we're going to use my quilt embellisher again, but we're going to take it um, to the next level because you can do so much more as it is to create your quilting designs with um, my quilt embellisher. And I'm going to give you many more ways to uh, do that. So we're going to talk about creating, you know, a custom block. We have those built-in blocks. So we're going to see that. Also last week, um, someone requested specifically about using an image of a line drawing to convert it to stitches. So I'm actually going to show you that as well. Um, and that actually fits into the category of drawing or creating your own design. I've got several ways that you can do that as well. And now uh, Quilt Embellisher has um, also text built in and has really beautiful uh, little decor items you can put around your text. So you can create a quilt label in my Quilt Embellisher as well. So um, and sorry about that. I went backwards. Um, and uh, so these are some of the things that I showed you guys two weeks ago that you could do. But just kind of a reminder, like here we used a built in quilting uh, design that's in our decor category. Um, this border is actually drawn in the software. Um, this particular one, this uses a shape that we're going to convert. And I'm actually going to show you this today because it's a very easy way to create quilting. But also this spiral is one of our artwork tool options. And we can actually just click and drag a spiral if you love swirls. Quilting fills like you see here, those decor, the same as here, but we've used one for a triangle here. We've used one in the center of this echo quilting. Um, here we've also used one that fits into this applique block. And then this block here in the bottom right, I actually drew the quilt quilting um, with our artwork tool. And it's really easy. So I'll show you that as well. Um, you can also do this mosaic tile quilting. There are some built in mosaic tiles, we call them that you can fill with those quilting designs. It's a very easy and unique quilting design. Uh, we talked about using the um, crazy quilt stitches to create custom quilting stitches last week as well. You can quilt around a design like you see here. And then I'm actually going to show you this coffee cup here today. Um, 
you can, or this teacup, whichever you prefer, but you can actually draw on your screen of your computer if you have a touch screen computer. If you don't have a touch screen, you can use your, use your mouse to do it um, as well. So there's just tons of different things that you can do inside of um, my quilt embellisher. So we're going to see uh, quite a few of those today. So I see, thanks for joining, Ayn. You guys know Ayn McCarthy, one of our educators. And so she's um, joining us today. Thanks for watching. And so thanks for joining Jan, another one of our uh, frequent flyers. Also, Linda uh, Johnston, Sharon Jones, thanks for um, being here. And she says she's embroidering uh, the free Christmas design. So on towels, that's a cute project. So if you're unfamiliar, Dime has a free on the house, we call it, uh, design each week that Eileen gives away on the Thursday Facebook Live, which of course is not uh, happening this week because of the holiday. But every week it's a free one. If you go to dzgns.com, you can get those uh, free designs as well. So uh, thanks for joining. Uh, and so Terry already has a question. Uh, so can you save into quilting machine formats? Yes, you can. So we have long arm formats that you can save to right from Quilt Embellisher. And we'll I'll show you that as well um too so and i agree marianne thanks for that nice comment so the dime software is so powerful the endless possibilities i definitely agree and um it is hard to absorb it all so thank you for that comment okay so i want to start with this blog see here. And this is actually a little uh, video of how you can draw on the screen because I can't show you um, the computer. So I have this little video to show you exactly what to do. So we're going to start with this one and then I'm going to show you how to create the remainder of the quilting that you see there on the block. So let's take a look at um, how to draw a quilting design in my quilt embellisher. So I'm going to show you how to draw that steam for the teacup there. And inside of your my quilt embellisher software in order to draw freely you want to change your settings to free hand so in the uh, general options under digitizing change to free hand that allows you to just draw any shape on the screen so I'm going to select my run stitch tool here and then click uh, on the, or, or touch the screen and just draw that steam. And then I hit enter to uh, set the stitches. So and again here, draw on the screen and set the stitches by hitting enter. So that's like super easy, right? So I wanted to show you actually on the touch screen in that image, because of course, when you see me head over to the software, you don't see a stylus or my mouse uh, um, moving in order to see that. So let's head over and see that block. Um, in the software. And I've got some other uh, um, ways that I'm going to show you as well. So just to recap, in case you weren't here two uh, weeks ago, just, just to recap, I want to show you um, what we talked about. So we talked about there's many different ways to create custom quilting designs in your uh my Quilt Embellisher software. So I'm going to start by selecting a quilt block. And from the the library, there are are many different options. So I'm just going to do this uh, pinwheel block here. Now, all of these options that you see here, there's actually six icons up here where my mouse is blinking. That uh, Those six icons are all quilting fills. So if you select a shape, and I'm going to select my um, the orange shapes on the screen here, and just the orange shapes. I had to click away. There we go. And I just held down my control key to click, and then I can choose uh, to fill that with a quilting fill. So that these are quilt fills. So it takes a shape and it fills it with that quilt design. So let's put a different one in the blue one. So click, hold down your control key, and then you can click on each of the shapes you want to add. So let's go and just add something else. For this one, I'm going to do something that's a circ, you know, kind of a round since the other one had straight edges. So, and look how cute that is. So for this block, if you have a pinwheel block that's in your uh, quilt, this is the way that you can select that exact block and turn that into a quilting design that would fit that pinwheel block. So if I select my pinwheel block again, I'm just going to send it to the black back. And then I'm going to um, change that to be a, a lighter color. So let's do our um, quilting stitches. I'm going to actually make those darker. So I'm just going to select them over here in my sequence view and then make that a dark color so you can see what I mean. Okay, so I selected the block and then I used that to convert to those quilting 
fills. So that are those are those icons up here, quilting fills. You can also, I'm going to delete that quilting. You can also take one of the uh, blocks as design purposes and use these built-in uh, embellishments. So like I said, we went over this last week, so I'm not going to go over in detail, but each one of these has a square, a circle, a rectangle, and a triangle design that coordinate, and you can use this in your quilt. So these designs uh, are not fills. So it's just a quilting design that you can then add to your uh, block like you see here. I'm going to make that darker so we can see. Okay. So that's uh, those two ways we talked about last week. So this week we're going to going to do something um, a little bit different. So let's work with our, our uh, little mug rug here. So we saw how to draw this steam. And I'm actually going to go up here and show you because I know the video moves quickly. So if you go up to tools and general options, under the digitizing settings, if you switch that to freehand draw, it will will allow you to just move your mouse. And so I'm going to show you that. So I'm going to click and I'm well, I need to choose my tool. <laughs> you have to have your tool selected. So I'm going to choose my run stitch tool. You can also do this with your artwork tool as well. And then you can see how it's a pen or a pencil. Um, that's letting me know that I'm just going to freely draw a shape and it's going to convert it to run. So for the steam there, we did it with my stylus in the video, but you certainly can draw that with your mouse. And now I'm going to hit the enter on my keyboard and we just drew that shape. Now over here, now I'm not as good as my with my mouse as I am with my pencil. <laughs> so, or with my stylus and then press enter. So you can draw directly on the screen if you prefer to. So I'm going to undo that because that looks horrible. Way better over here, right? Um, and this I did with my stylus because my computer is touch screen. Okay. And so that is one way that you can create your own custom stitches. You can draw right on your workspace, either with your mouse or a stylus, uh, if you have a touch screen. Um, just make sure you go to those general options. Now, I'm also, I'm going to flip back to my simple draw. So under general options, I'm going to go digitizing and simple draw. What simple draw is, is it wants me to click a series of points um, and then it will convert that to stitches. So if I hold down my control key, I can click and get curved points. So I can enter these just in a normal digitizing fashion as well. So it's really up to you. Um, now for this particular design here and here, I'm actually going to start a new page and I'm going to grab that block. So I'm going to go to my quilt block library and I'm going to go to my geese blocks and choose this block here. And then I'm going to rotate that around. And now let's create the quilting that was the spiral and the two that I had here. So now I am going to choose my artwork tool. So if I click the drop down list, you can see that I've got uh, several different shapes that I can draw. Any of these shapes, if I click and drag, I'm just going to draw several of them uh, just so you can see. Uh, all I'm doing is clicking my artwork tool, the drop down arrow, and I'm choosing one of these shapes and then drawing the shape on the screen by clicking, holding down my mouse, and then dragging that uh, shape. So click, hold, drag, click, hold, drag. Okay. Now these are all artwork. You guys, we've talked about this numerous times, right? Where the um, artwork is not stitches. It says artwork and zero over here. So if I select all of these pieces of artwork, if I want them to become a run stitch, I need to select them and click my run stitch option here on the toolbar. So if I click run now, each of these are run stitches. So let's zoom into the star so you can see what I mean. And I'll turn, uh, I'll do my slow redraw here until it gets to the star so you can see that it is stitches. So any of these shapes that are built in, um, these artwork tools can be converted to a shape. So if you're not a, um, a skilled you know, artist, but you just really need a heart quilting design, you can do that by drawing these shapes. So let's use this spiral. So the spiral has, when you click on it, it comes up and says, do you want a single swirl, double or a double swirl? And I'm just going to start with a single. And then if, certainly I would recommend you playing with these different 
different options. And for the revolutions, you can make it as many as you want. I'm going to drop it down to two and click OK. And you can see that there's a spiral attached to my cursor. So now I'm going to click and drag and it will draw the spiral for me. Now, remember, this is artwork, so we do need to convert that to run stitches. But before I do that, I'm actually going to make another spiral, but I'm going to just use this one. I'm going to copy it up here on my toolbar, paste it, and then I'm going to mirror image it and then slide that out. And then I'm going to also flip that so that I get this sort of look. So, and then I'm going to touch my spiral to the end of one another. Okay. So I just put them really close. If I zoom in really close, you can see right there. And so let's take that select tool and click that uh, second artwork there. And then I'm just going to uh, move it so that it's right at the end, just like that. OK, so you can zoom in really close to make sure you get it uh, just where you want it. So now I'm going to select both of those artwork and I'm going to combine them. Remember when we use our combine tool, it shows as one object rather than two. So now when I turn this into my run stitches and um, my design is going to start um, at one end and then I can move my stop point to make it stop at the other because it is one object. So I've got one stop and one uh, one start and one stop. And so then now whenever I click and we watch these stitch out, I'm going to go really fast past all of those. And then let's watch that spiral. You can see that it starts, stitches around and continues on and ends right there. So I created a design that is essentially a forward run. I'm not overriding it. Um, and now that I have it done, if I want to, I can rotate it slightly here just to fit into my shape. I can also uh, shrink it down, um, copy and paste, and uh, maybe I want to put two of those. Now, in this case, um, there is, unless I continued this run stitch on and then uh, manually drew it to connect here, I am going to have a trim, a stop and a trim which I'm fine with that, but you certainly can continue on from one point to the next if you want by using this drawing run tool. So I'm going to zoom in and I'll show you that. Okay, so we're going to select our run stitch tool. And now you can see that I don't have the pencil. Um, I could change it to the free hand if I want, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do my series of, of clicks to make this shape. So I'm going to start here at this end. That's where my uh, start is going to be. And then I'm going to hold down my control key so that every point that I click is curved. And now I'm just going to, I'm just kind of, you know, playing around here. I'm just making a line that I can then connect right back here just like that. And now let's uh, watch that. So I'm going to take these uh, designs off here so we don't have to keep watching them draw here. I'm just deleting, select, delete, select, delete, select, delete. Okay. And now let's watch this draw uh, in our stitch out in our slow redraw. So I'm going to stitches here, stitches here. It skips over stitches there because that's the order we originally drew it. And then you can see it connects there. Okay. So we just need to change our order. So down here, the first thing that's going to be this spiral. The second thing we need to stitch is our connecting point. So here is our second spiral. So I'm just going to click and move that down. And now it's going to stitch in the right order. We just need to check our start stop point. So it starts, it ends there, which is perfect. And then it continues on to my run line. Then it picks up and starts there. So look at that. So that's a way that you can connect those. And that way you do not have your uh, your trims. Um, you can just set that to um, carry on. You don't want to have those stops and tie offs. Now, the next thing we want to do is uh, click this command option here. Command is going to show you those uh, commands that are there. And you can see that it has a trim command here and here. So we need to turn those off. Okay. So if we choose our um, uh, combine, we should be able to um, turn those uh, trim or make those trims go away, not turn them off. Sorry, make those trims go away. So now let's see if our combine will help that. So I'm going to select all three pieces and I'm going to select that as a um, combined object. So now it sees it as one and I still see my scissors there. So let's check with our shape tool. And that's because it, for whatever 
reason, moved my stop point. So I start here is good. End here is where I want. And so once I click enter on my keyboard, we can now see that I have no trims except for at the very end. So it'll start out that regular tie out and then it's going to stitch and end right there at our very last stitch. Say that you can make all of your run stitches um, connect and uh, not stop, make those forward run designs. Okay, so now let's complete this one and then we'll answer some questions. So another way that you can create designs in my quilt embellisher, I'm actually going to open up a new page and let's get a new block. All of these built-in blocks here, I'm actually going to go to some of these Mariner's Compass because these will make really cute quilting uh, designs. So let's just select um, this one. And these blocks that are built in here, you can actually select them and convert this to a run stitch. Now, if I do that, every piece is going to have a run stitch left and right. So what I might do is get rid of the, uh, the cream color and maybe the interior color or the middle color. So we'll play around and see. So let's get rid of, um, not that color, let's get rid of this one. And I just want to show you. So if I select all of those, all I did was delete those pieces. And if I click here, it'll actually convert that to a run stitch. Now, the reason I deleted some parts of these is if I go back and do an undo and select everything. Uh oh, it's thinking, thinking, thinking. I did one too many undos, so we'll give it just a minute. So while it's thinking, I'll go over and answer some of your questions. Oh, look at that. It popped right back up. <laughs> okay, so if we select everything over here and click our run stitch, um, you're going to have the run stitch for this entire piece. So you'll have a run here from this piece and a run there from that piece. That's why I just deleted some of those parts. But certainly you can uh, do whatever you, you prefer. My point is that any of these built-in blocks, you could convert to a quilting design. So let's go up here to um, something a little bit more simple, like this one right here might be a good one. And I'm going to delete just that background color and again, select and click for the run. So this is an easy way to create uh, run stitches from those built-in blocks and you don't have to draw these shapes. So let's head back over to here and I want to show you some ways that you can um, make changes. So if I select these two blocks here and copy and paste them, so copy up here and paste, and then I'm going to just move those out of the way so you can see what I've done. Now I'm going to turn those into run stitch because we just saw that we could do that, right? Now you can see, let me turn my commands off too. So you can see that these two run stitches, they are going to stitch over top of each other if I leave it this way, just like that. And that might not be what you want. So let's talk about about some things that you can do. So this shape here, if I put this right over my block, now my pink block here, I accidentally moved. That's why it's not lined up. Um, but if I were to put that stitch right over top this exact block, basically going to stitch in the ditch. Okay. I'm going to zoom in here and let's make that a, a darker color. So if I were to do that, it's going to stitch in the ditch. Okay. So one thing you could do is you could use your built-in shapes, just resize them smaller. Sometimes I really like just some simplistic uh, very simple quilting like you see here, where it just the same shape, but it is just uh, a little bit smaller and quilts right into the size. So let's resize this one and do the same thing. So I'm going to put that right over, and then we're going to make that a darker color again so we can see it. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here, and that I can leave that if you like it. If you want to change it, you can edit that. So remember our shape tool? We've used this quite a bit in some of our other. Um, Facebook uh, software success, the shape tool allows me to change these points. Okay. So the start and the stop is here. It's going to run around and stop, which is nice because I don't have any areas that it's overlapping, but I can click these and I can move these points. So you can see here, I could drag it to make a completely different shape. Okay. I'm going to undo. I could also grab the 
actual line, the straight line and adjust that as well. So man, this is a uh, slow. It's got a lot of thinking. I think it's ready for its holiday. So we'll let it continue uh, thinking there. There we go. And then I'm going to undo again so that I get that back to um, my regular line. So here we go. So now not only can I move the point, you see when I hover over it, it shows the blue dot, but I can also click on the line itself and it's got a curve and that lets me know that it's going to kind of curve that in. Okay. So I'm going to pull this one a little further and pull this one further. And then this one, I'm going to overlap with that intersection there. And then I'm going to right mouse click or either enter on your keyboard. And I've used that triangle to make a completely different design. Okay. And now for this one here, I'm going to still with my shape tool selected, instead of dragging this in, I'm going to actually add a point there. So I need to not do undo for whatever reason. <laughs> it's being slow for me today. Um, and so for this one, instead of just pulling Pulling in that side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a point um, so that we can move that extra point around. So we'll let that continue uh, to think there. Okay. And so now I'm going to right mouse click and say add point. And then this allows me to kind of pull this in a little bit different looking where it's just making a curve rather than those uh, um, same type of curves we did on the other one there. So right mouse click, add point. And I'm adding it just somewhere close to the center. So here, right mouse click, add point, and then pull that in. And then I'm doing a right mouse click or your enter on your keyboard will just accept those changes. And then you've got a different shape that you're working with there. So isn't that cool? So your built-in shapes, you can use those to uh, help you draw your quilting designs, okay? So whether it's the artwork or the built-in blocks. So let's answer some questions, um, and then I'm going to show you how to use the magic wand to do some tracing um, as well. So let's uh, see what we've got. So Terry, um, we answered her ter Terry's question, and I'll show you those formats when we go back over there, um, but you can save two quilting formats. Terry also asked, can you use a Wacom uh, tablet or a Wacom? I've heard them called different things. Yes, when you plug that in, it's uh, uh, essentially a USB device that's, um, you know, will work within your, your software. So yes, you can use that if you want. Um, and then Alice, thank you for joining Alice. She said she needs a cheat sheet to remember all these specific features. I definitely agree, but I will tell you the best way to remember them is use them over and over and over. And it will, you know, just help sink in and help, you know, remember those things as well. So, um, and then Carolyn Morrow, thanks for joining us. She says, uh, can you do the run stitch conversion in my quilt. Um, I'm assuming you mean my block piece or maybe. So we don't have a MQB uh, software. So maybe you mean my block piece or my block piece or will take the block and allow you to turn it into a run stitch. Um, if that's not your question, Carolyn, just clarify and I'll make sure to answer that. Um, and then we have a Facebook user that says this is going to be available again later. Yes, this um, and all software success are available on our YouTube channel after the live replay. If you click on the playlist and the software success, they're all grouped in there together. Um, and then Mary uh, says, is that Hipskin? Mary Hipskin says, can this be done on a Destiny? So what we're doing, Mary, is we're taking um, our Quilt Embellisher software and we're basically creating our quilting design. Once you've created the design, you would save that file and that's what you would take to your destiny. The software alone does not run on any embroidery machine. It runs on your computer so you can uh, create your, your quilting files. And I'll show you that save when I head back over there. So that's a really good one. So, And then Dawn, thank you for chiming in. She says she uses a Wacom tablet with her Dime software. So thank you so much uh, Dawn from Creative Applicates for confirming that. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so I think that's all the questions. I was looking for those question marks. If you start with those three questions, um, then I will be able to pick your question out of the comments. So let's head back over there and talk about uh, saving uh, the design. So now the block itself is not going to save. When I save this, it's going to look like the, not that. <laughs> Let me, I'm just hiding all of the artwork. Um, to show you what it's going to look like. So hide, hide, hide. So that's our design and that's what we would be saving. So let me, um, man, this is, I did undo again. I'm so used to doing that undo. Um, 
I, and so every time I do undo, it's thinking. I think my computer's just got a lot of things going on. So I apologize for that. Normally it does not take this long. Um, but the design that you see on the screen, that our quilting file. We were just using the block um, to help us with our design. Okay. And so in this instance here, what I did for my little mug rug here is I copied and I pasted um, my swirls and also my block designs here. And now when I save this, it's just going to save the quilting file. So or the embroidery file. In this case, this is a, a run stitch around my teacup as well. So it'll say save that also. So to save file save as from this drop down list, you can choose from uh, all kinds of formats. So we have formats for every um, brand of embroidery machine that you probably could imagine. So um, we've got Brother, Baby Lock, we've got Foff Viking, Elna, Janome, we've got um, Bernina, We've got uh, Singer. We've also got commercial formats, Rakoma, Tajima, um, and um, Melco uh, formats. But if you keep scrolling down, there's many other formats. You know, you, you look for your format. SWF's up there too. Um, but you can see down below, I've got formats that say uh, Pro Stitcher and also Compu Quilter. Those are long arm quilting formats. Now, you do not have to have a long arm quilter to do what I'm showing you today. I do this with my embroidery machine, but I just want to let you know that you can create and and save to long arm quilting formats uh, from my quilt embellisher software. Now I'm using an embroidery machine, so I would choose the uh, format for my embroidery machine. And then when I click save, it's actually going to save this file that I can then take to my embroidery machine. So really easy, um, really simple to do. Okay, so I am going to now talk about a, another way that you can generate a quilting design. So I'm going to open up a new page. And um, we talked about you can use the artwork tools to draw, right? Um, you can also use your run stitch tool to draw. But you can also bring in an image of a design to either trace if it does not work with your magic wand, or you can use it with your magic wand. So I'm going to use a backdrop. So I'm going to go to file and load backdrop. Now I have um, some backdrop files here that are um, my backdrop. So this is not a built-in design. So just so you know, I actually found some of these images on the internet. I just for line drawings um, and things like that to find these files. So this is not, again, a built-in file. I usually save my files that I get under a folder called My Backdrop or My Images. So these are files that I have either um, generated or I have uh, found on the internet that I use for personal reasons, you know, personal stitching. Um, but I'm going to use this flower design here. So when I bring this in, this is just an image of this design. Now, if I zoom in, you can see uh, that we've got these uh, thick lines and they are start to get fuzzy the closer in that I zoom uh, to the design. So the first thing I'm going to do when I bring in an image of a de design other dime software. It works the same way um, as if you're working on a picture of a garment or something like that, but you want to set the scale. So underneath this backdrop tool, the fly out menu, define scale. And then I'm just going to choose a point and go over and I want my quilting design to fit, say, an eight inch block. So I'm going to make my quilting design, say, seven and three quarters, just so it's kind of off my seams a little bit. Now that's a personal preference. You could see that number to any number you want. So it zoomed in really close because I resized it. And then I'm going to double click my zoom tool in order to zoom back out. So now this image I can trace with my uh, run stitch tool. Okay. Just like we draw manually, I can uh, choose a starting point, click and trace this. Now I'm not uh, going to make this perfect, but I'm just going to hit enter and hide my image to show you. You can see I just traced that. Okay, But if you have an image that is good enough, the 
Magic Wand will actually auto trace for you. Okay, so let's see how this works in this particular instance. So I've got my run stitch tool selected and my magic wand becomes illuminated. So I'm going to click my select tool here. So notice my, my magic wand is not active. It's grayed out. Okay, if I click my run stitch tool or my artwork tool, it will actually allow me to to uh, use that. So I'm going to click the run stitch tool and now I can click my magic wand or with my run stitch tool, I can click my magic wand. Well, we're creating a quilting stitch. So I'm going to leave my run stitch tool selected and then I'm going to choose the magic wand. And now you can see that my cursor looks like a blue magic wand. Now, when I use the blue magic wand, it actually traces on both sides of the line so that if you wanted to turn that into like a satin stitch or an applique, um, that's what the magic wand is doing. And this takes just a little bit of time to generate. So we'll let it do that. But with a quilting stitch, we don't want us to uh, have stitches on both sides of the line. We want it to only have one. So let me zoom in here and I'll show you what I mean. So the magic wand did a fantastic job of tracing that, but it traced on the outside and the inside of the line. So I have double lines uh, for this quilting design. So I'm going to zoom back out by double clicking my zoom tool. And then I am going to as bad as I hate to. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do an undo. I'm going to just delete those stitches. So let me select everything <laughs> and try not to hit my undo since it's lagging. And then I'm going to turn my image back on. Okay. So I just deleted that. Now let's do the same thing. I'm going to go back, click my run stitch tool, and then my magic wand is illuminated. So now I've got my magic wand. Now, if I hold down my shift key, look at my magic wand. It turns red. Okay, the red magic wand is like red work. It's going to give you one single line. So I clicked on my uh, design with the red magic wand. And once it's done thinking, I'll hide my image uh, to show you what we got. So now I'm just going to hide my backdrop, which is uh, the hide and the show tool down here at the bottom. And now look at my quilting design. I get one row of stitching with the run stitch magic wand uh, or the red magic wand, which is like your red work tool. Okay. So you can bring in images and the uh, software can auto trace them if it's a really good image. So again, Google, uh, look for line drawings, uh, line art, uh, you know, things like that. And you'll find a bunch of images that are just black and white coloring pages is another one uh, that you can Google and look. But Let's see what happens when we want to draw something that is not um, uh, able to be traced. OK, so I'm going to open up a new page and then I'm going to say file and load backdrop. And now for this one, I actually drew on a piece of paper with a Sharpie marker. And this is actually a picture from my phone. OK, so now I'm going to set the scale. Remember, when you bring in an image, you want to click define scale. And now I am going to measure from this point to this point for my drawing. And I had drawn that out to fit an eight inch block. Of course, you could make that number whatever you want, but you can see it resized it. So now let's zoom in. And now my magic wand will most likely not work here because when you take a photograph, even though it's a black line, there's so many different colors um, that it can't, it doesn't see it as one. Okay. So, but let's try it. Doesn't hurt to try, right? So if I choose my run stitch tool, my magic wand is illuminated. So I'm going to click that and now it's blue. I'm going to hold down my shift key to turn it red. And then I'm just going to choose a point and I'm going to click right on that line. Okay. And then we'll give it a, a bit to generate. Now, honestly, I don't think this is going to do it, but let's just see. Okay. So I'm going to hide my image. This is my backdrop show or hide um, down here in the bottom left. And you can see that it did not trace the entire thing, okay? Now, I could keep clicking around and having it trace that if I want, you know, just clicking and then try to get it to trace another point, yada, yada. But in this instance right here, I would just probably trace this either with my stylus or my uh, run stitch tool just by clicking around, okay? So I've got my run stitch tool selected. My magic wand is still selected, so I'm actually going to deselect that so that I've just got my regular mouse 
mouse pointer. And now I'm going to click around this design. So I'm going to hold down my control key so that I get curved points. And, you know, this is what digitizing is. Oops, I'm sorry. I was had my, I had the shift key held down on my control key. Control key is going to give you those curve points just like that. Okay. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time to make this perfect. I just want to show you um, that you can trace a design by just clicking around. And then of course, if you have the touch screen, you could do that uh, as well. But bringing in an image and then I'm going to just hit my enter and I'm going to hide my backdrop so we can see what we did. Now you can see that I traced that in order to draw that quilting design. So that's several different ways that you can uh, create quilting stitches in my quilt embellisher. So you can trace them from a drawing. You can trace them with the magic wand if it's a good image. You can also um, uh, draw them, you know, yourself uh, by using the built-in artwork tools. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's see if we've got any questions uh, from those examples. So I see a couple of them popping up here. So Rosalind Bush. So thank you for being here, Rosalind. She says, what if there's a broken line on the image? So that's actually a great question. If there's a broken line, it will stop and not trace. But if you are manually drawing and there's a broken line, you can just go ahead and keep drawing past the broken line. So when you are the one doing the drawing and not letting the software doing uh, do it for you, you can still control that. If there's a break in your image, you can keep drawing as well. So and Mary sa Maria says, OMG, I never knew that about the ma red magic wand. So I learn something every time I watch. So well, thank you for joining, Marianne. I'm glad that you learned something new. So yes, when you select the magic wand, use that uh, shift key to um, use that red work tool. So, and then Terry says on the embroidery you created with the red magic wand, could you have removed the straight line in the center of the design? Yes, you could. And so I'll go back over um, and let's see this image here. I think she's talking about. So let's zoom into the center. So we're back over in the software. Um, and so I'm just going to zoom in. And I, I think this is what Terry's talking about. So let me choose my zoom tool. So that straight line right there that is uh, that it automatically generated. Yes. If you want to remove that, you can choose your shape tool. And do you see that point? You could delete it. And uh, oh, and, and then it needing to regenerate. Sorry. And I think it's two points. I think I should have probably deleted twice. But I'm deleting these uh, points here. Um, so that it basically stops here. And so we'll see if that, that delete did it. You can always drag that point uh, backwards as well up to here so that it stops. And then I did a right mouse click and update that path. So yes, once you've done the uh, auto trace tool, you certainly can still um you know, edit your design by choosing your shape tool as well. So that's a really good, good question there. So, okay. So that was pretty easy, right? And, and this is not, I mean, there's so many different ways, like I could probably keep going on and on and on about all the different ways, but let's, uh, now that we've seen that, oh, I see, uh, let's see, we have a, a couple of other questions pop up. So Mary says, is there a place to have a class with this software? Um, so Mary, check with your local, um, store that carries any dime inspiration software and they teach classes and right now you're in a class so this is uh, our software success every first and third tuesday where i teach these topics in different pieces of dime software um and then we also have past youtube videos and all kinds of things uh that you can um select but check with your local dealer they may have classes as well so and then eileen says can you quickly repeat how to access the red magic wand yes so i Eileen, let me head back over there because I'm going to do uh, quilt labels. And so to access the red magic wand. So now let me give you another tip here. I'm going to go to a new page. Now, notice when I click my, red, my run stitch tool here and I could draw on the screen. But notice that my magic wand is still not illuminated. Okay. So I am going to uh, have to load a backdrop design for my magic wand to work because it knows that there's nothing to trace. So file, load backdrop. I am going to choose that same flower and then I'm just going to delete our, our stitches here. And now when I click the run stitch tool, 
my magic wand can now be selected because I have a backdrop. So if you just have a blank space, it knows there's nothing to draw. And so you have to click either the run stitch or the artwork. And now to turn that red magic wand, hold down your shift key, um, and then you can click uh, to trace there. Now let's uh, do one more thing here. What if I didn't do the run stitch? What if I trace this with my artwork tool? Okay, so I've got artwork tool selected and the magic wand. And now I'm going to hold that uh, shift key down and it is not giving me the option for red. Okay. So to make sure that you get the red magic wand, you have to use the run stitch tool. I get a magic wand with my artwork tool, but I cannot get the red magic wand with the artwork tool. So you have to choose your run stitch and then the magic wand, hold down your shift key to turn that red and then click right on your black line to get that single line of stitching. And so if I turn off my um, image there, you can see there's our trace design um, there. So really easy, right? Okay, so the last thing I wanted to share with you before we go is that you do have built-in text in my quilt embellisher. So the text tool here, and then also these border designs and these decor. So if I click my text tool, you can see that the letter A is attached to my cursor. I'm going to click one time on the screen and I'm going to say made with and then hit my enter key and put this on a next line and just say love. So made with love. OK. And, you know, whatever you want to put your name, the date, what you're stitching on. And then if I click on the yellow letters over here, it will open up all of my font options. My quilt embellisher has a lot of font options built in. So you choose the type of text you want. I'm going to choose this cursive here. I love cursive font. Um, and I can save this. I don't, it doesn't have to be a quilt label. This could be anything. You could add text above a design or whatever. Um, but one thing I do want to point out here, notice my uh, cursive font. I've got a little bit of gap here between the D and the E. Um, and I can easily adjust that by sliding uh, those closer together, just like that, um, so that they're touching. So these double triangles here, that is on-screen kerning so that I can put my individual letters closer together. Now the E, I probably wouldn't do it because I don't want it to touch the uh, V like that. You know, we need a little gap between there and this particular font type, but you can touch a uh, by using that on-screen kerning and change the distance between just a couple of the letters, you know, if you'd like. So, so there's my text. And now these two options here are decorations for your quilt label. So we've got these borders. So you could choose any of these borders and you can see it makes a fun little shape around your, your text and you can resize that if you want. And make sure everything is nice and center. So if I select everything, I can use my vertical and horizontal align to make sure that I'm centered both directions. Okay. And now I've got this cute little decoration around the label. So I could save this to the format for my embroidery machine. File, save as. From this list, don't forget to choose your machine format type. Okay. Take it to your embroidery machine, stitch this on regular quilting cotton, and uh, you've got a uh, finished label. Um, you just need to turn your edges under, stitch it on if you'd like. Now, I'll give you another uh, um, tip here. Let's see these decor. So let's say you don't want a box. Maybe you just want a nice little swirly uh, design underneath it. And I can resize this. Okay. So maybe you just want a little embellishment to your text, but you don't necessarily want uh, a full frame. That's what the these uh, little decor are. So the border and the decor. But what I like to do is I actually like to draw a front stitch uh, rectangle. So if you uh, choose your rectangle option here and then click and drag and turn that into a run stitch. So if I select it and click on my run stitch option, now I have a run stitch that's going to stitch. It's going to stitch last. So if I stitch my text on my quilting cotton, okay, and then stitch my little 
uh, swoop de woo there. And the last thing it's going to stitch is a run stitch. Now I could put another piece of fabric on top of there and then uh, with the right sides together and stitch that run stitch and it'll actually make um, an enclosed label and then I could turn it inside out if I want want so I don't have to turn under my edges. And now I know someone is thinking, well, I don't have an opening for turning. <laughs> you can. Uh, what I usually do just um, it, if I don't have the ability to edit the the uh, points, I a lot of times will just um, snip those stitches. You know, you don't have to leave the opening. But if you want to leave an opening, you can either use your run stitch tool. Let's let's do this. So I'm actually going to start down here and I'm going to click over here on the corner. And then I'm going to click up here, click over here. And so I'm making a box with my run tool and then ending over here. And then now I have an opening. Now, I did not uh, make sure I was lined up, um, but certainly you can do that by using your guidelines if you'd like. So here you can see that I pulled down that uh, line. So if you click on your ruler bar and just drag your mouse while you're holding it. You can use those guidelines to help you. You can also use your grid. If you turn your grid off and on, that can help you uh, draw those straight lines as well. Um, and I'm going to do a, a, um, a click over here on my, my guideline and then say remove that and then remove that because it just gets confusing. So I'm going to remove my guide lines there. And then let me show you one more thing that you could do. Uh, so our box, since it's already a per perfect uh, box, I can also use my shape tool to add a point. We've done this just recently. We right mouse click, say add a point there. And I can over here, right mouse click, add a point. And now I'm going to back to my shape tool. And now I'm going to choose a right mouse click and split line. And that will uh, separate these two pieces. So now when I uh, click this here, I can, I have two separate points. So let me choose my, my uh, point again, and then I'm going to zoom in my shape tool. And now there's actually two points behind there. So if I move the start and the stop, I can see that these are two separate pieces. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to put this one back. But this one, I'm actually going to just press the delete key on my keyboard. Let's zoom out a little bit. And it's going to delete this point and pop me back to here. And then now you can see I've got an opening. I do need to make sure that that goes to the end. Okay. So what I did was I did a right mouse click. I added a point so that I had two points in between that I could then split and break apart so that I get this opening. But a lot of times I'll draw a box and just snip those stitches when I'm ready to turn it at the machine. So, but that's an easy way to create a label there. So isn't that easy? So that run stitch uh, is really a um, great tool to have because of course, not just a quilting stitch, but you can do so much more with it. So, and then Terry says, uh, use a piece of fusible cutaway um, on the top and cut the opening in the fusible to turn. So yes, that's another great uh, tip. We teach that in our um, one of our events as well. And then that fusible will hold it in place uh, while you hand stitch it on and you just snip an opening in the back to turn it inside out and don't have to have that opening in your um, in your run stitch. So cute, right? So hopefully you guys learned uh, something today and I uh, enjoyed showing this uh, um, my quilt embellisher to you. I just want to remind you um, to like us and follow us on uh, Facebook uh, because that's how you're going to be notified about these upcoming live presentations. So if you're not sure how to do that, take a look at this video. In this video, we'll show you how to subscribe to a YouTube channel and follow a Facebook page through your phone. Let's start with YouTube. First, open your YouTube app on your phone. Once you're on your home page, search for the designs in machine embroidery in the search bar at the top of the screen. Click on it and go to the channel page. Once on the channel page, click the subscribe button. And that's it. You're now subscribed to the channel. Now let's move on to Facebook. First, open your Facebook app. Once on your home page, search for designs in machine embroidery in the search bar at the top of the screen. Once on the profile page, click the three dots and select the follow button. And that's it. We are now following the page. Thanks for watching.
Okay, a couple more questions before we sign off, and I'll tell you what to expect when you see me back here in December. Um, and so the uh, um, question that just popped up that I just noticed that I missed. So Carolyn Morrow says, uh, did you scan the image that I hand drew the artwork? Um, Carolyn, you can scan. That actually will give you a better image. But I actually just took a photograph with my phone in order to uh, bring that into my software. So I took the picture with my phone, and then I emailed it to myself and then that way it's on my computer so but if you scan it you'll actually get a nicer line because uh, scan will do the black and white instead of a photo so that'll actually work even better um, and then Suzanne asked about bringing in a unique block into the software so I'm still over here so let's take a look if you have a block that you want to bring in um, you can take a photograph of it and do the load backdrop and if I go to my quilt block options here um, you can see that here's a picture of a block that I uh, just stitched together on my sewing machine. And now I could use this image to actually uh, trace um, this particular block, or I could find a block that is similar and see if, let's see if we've got a churn dash block in here. So I'm going to do just dash and see if it'll search. Um, so, yep, there's a churn dash there and then a churn dash. Um, here. And I don't think that's a real churn dash. There we go. That's the one I wanted. I'm going to go back up one. So this one right here. So I could use this built in block uh, to create my stitched block. So if it's not the same exact design, you can just move um, these pieces around. Now this one actually looks uh, pretty close, but if it wasn't, you know, you could resize these. Um, if you're, say you're, um, rectangles here were wider. You could resize those to what they needed to be. Um, you can also, I'm going to so, uh, select all of that and just delete it. You can also draw right on your, your block here. So you could use your tools like your uh, rectangle tool here. And then if I just click and drag and draw that square and then click and drag to draw this rectangle here. And then same thing here. And then use your uh, triangle tool to draw those triangles, half square triangles there, or either draw a square and then uh, split that triangle in half. So, but you can use your uh, triangle tool to draw this as well. So now it draws a, um, you know, uh, a triangle that is whatever you click and drag. So you might want to just draw one, rotate it. Whoops, sorry. I'm going to do an undo there. And then I'm rotate it uh, 45. And then I can put it right over my block here. And then I'm just dragging it in to make the size that I need. So you can trace right on here and adjust those points to make the block that you need. Uh, it really just depends on, uh, you know, what kind of image you have. And you can see there's my shapes. You just need to make sure they're lined up perfectly, you know, to, to get your shapes that you need. Um, but you can also import artwork images of blocks. So if you do file and import artwork, these formats here that you see, you don't have to remember this. Just go to your software and say import artwork. You can import blocks that are in these formats. So it will read um, all different types of artwork. But if you bring in one that's a JPEG, that's load backdrop, and then you could trace it like we see here. So hopefully that helps you with your questions um, and gets you uh, the answers uh, to what you need. Now, in um, two weeks, I think it is, is that two weeks or a little over? Um, December the 5th is when I'll be back for software success. So, so the next one, I'm going to be using our My Pet Emoji software program. So if you haven't seen this, it is so cute. It has built in um, applique pets that you can customize. You can change the eyes. You can change, uh, you know, the snout, the nose, um, and basically build your own pet or a, a friend's pet. That's what I did here with these cute little uh, applique designs on the toe of these shoes. Um, that was a friend's pet that I then um, made the, the designs out of. So we're going to see what you can do 
with my pet emoji. It has both cats and dogs built in and lots of fun things that you can do um, with uh, that program. Now, uh, Lisa asked uh, another question here about is uh, BQM format available? Um, and, uh, if it's, is it included? So BQM, let me go over here. I'm unfamiliar with that format. So if I go to file and just save as, um, I can just look through my formats here. So BQM format. So what is BQM? So Lisa, tell us that, that over in the chat. I do see that it says Bernina BQM right there. So is that a, um, um, I have actually never used that before. So very interesting. I'd love to hear if you'd say what that is. So BQM format. Yes, it comes with my quilt embellisher. So you can save to BQM format. So glad you asked that question again. Bernina long arm. There you go. That would be why I haven't ever used a Bernina long arm. So yes, Lisa, you can save to BQM. Yay right? Love that. Okay, guys. So I will see you back here December the 5th. If you do not have my quilt embellisher, you certainly can purchase it from our site, but also check with your local dealer because they can give you um, a great deal on this software program. So my quilt embellisher was what I was using today and also two weeks ago. If you missed that episode, uh, head back over to our YouTube channel to um, get that uh, past video. So all right, guys, until I see you on another software success, thank you so much for being here, and I hope you learned something new today.